Hi everybody, Jerome right here again, and um, I have an image up of um, a Renaissance painting, and the title of this is Killing Dragons by Colart after Stratimus and it's C1640. Okay, so you can actually um, Google this image as well too. Okay, again, it's Killing Dragons by Colart, that's C-O-L-L-A-R-T. After Stratumus, that's S T R A D U N U M S, and um, 1640. Uh, the date is supposed to be on this. I don't know if this was made and created in 1640 or what there. But anyway, 1640. Okay, people, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you um, something about this. First of all, these images. We have a lot of images that um, of where. Our ancestors or artists actually depict our ancestors either slaying dragons or as you see it, uh, um, something an indication of dragons. But yet it's um, it's supposed to be um, dragons and, and dinosaurs or, and all of these things are not even supposed to be mentioned in our history because we have, um, we have um, not supposed to have coexistence with these creatures. Okay. And... <clears throat> And um, I don't know if, 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 if there was a coexistence or not because I actually wasn't there. However, through my paranormal experience and encounter, I do know for a fact that we are genetically linked with these creatures. And that's why um, it's being referenced. Um, and the best reference of it all is... Um, um, not just um, Anchor Wat, where you see a triceratops on the building and that and that glyph there on the on the building at Anchor Wat, which actually shows other mutations. I didn't and I didn't actually um do the um a video on that yet, but even with Anchor Wat, with that triceratops, it shows the other mutations above and below of how mankind was genetically um, bridged um, through that creature. Well. Do, mankind came through that key creature. That's what this is actually showing and signifying. And this is what's happening globally, people. When you see these creatures, dinosaurs, these these ancient um, dinosaurs depicted with mankind or recorded with mankind, it's showing you people that that is where we genetically evolved from. Okay, but it's just not in our in our history and in our record. However. A select few do know about that. I'm drinking my coffee as well as I'm doing it. So please um, forgive me as I take a break. Hmm. Alright. I want to show you something with this. People, look at this unusual painting. You have a, um, a like a lizard dinosaur. Um, I'm, I'm dragging here. I'm fighting with the image of that of like an elephant back here. You have these individuals running from a um a dragon from over here then here you have these individuals about to slay a sleeping dragon and over here you have these individuals which chopped off the head of a sleeping dragon people this exact image reminds me of what is actually being depicted and what was found on the um, the Peruvian burial stones it's almost identical and I want to point some things out to you about this here with this artist. If you look at this for what it is, people, even in the, in that time, if you think about this, this painting makes absolutely no sense. Look at this. It makes absolutely no sense, does it? Now, you want it to make sense? Let me make, I'm going to make quick sense of it for you. Real very quick sense. Look at it in the sense that they're telling you that there was a genetic splicing. Look at these as these axes, not as weapons, uh, not as weapons to destroy the dragon, but look at them as weapons, and and and, and, and indicating, say, stating that not weapons, but um, they're stating that these tools they were genetically spliced with these creatures. Look at it in that sense, and if and in the sense of slaying these dragons, not now look in their dormant state. Meaning that these these creatures genetically was in them, and now genetically they had slayed them. They removed their genetics that were a dominating factor in their genes from their genetics, and that's what this is signifying. 
that this creature is not here in the sense it's laying in its dormant state sleeping and what's happening here is that genetically they overcame it look at this man's face same thing with the perubial burial stones google that image look at that man's face that man's face is is look he looks like the creature that the head that is laying there look and then look at what's on top of their head look at these look at these faces they're designed to let you know that look we are genetically attached to what is here this is our ancestor this ancestor this genetic is in us but we don't want those genetics there no more so they were removed through genetic bridgings and it tells you this story this entire image tells you how these this these this this culture group remove these genetics from their bodies that's what this entire painting is suggesting not that they coexisted with these with these dragons but they remove their genetics from them. Now, I'm going to show you something on what I'm telling you here. Now, not only do this being look like the face of this. Okay? You see where the faces change at over here. These, they, I mean, this guy looks a little bit strange like that. But, I mean, you can see the genetic um, um, con um, connection or suggestions that they're making here. Now, on this dragon over here in the further background that the head has not been cut off yet look on the side of that dragon's face right there and you'll see a likeness of a man right there the face man now and then the dragon has its foot it's it what two 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 toes from his foot in that man's mouth now that's an indication and I can I mean I'm not going to go into detail of everything or what that means but I can I know what the, exactly what that symbolization is now I'm gonna call your attention to over here look at this guy here he has two fingers out right there and by the way people when you see that that symbolization that that's something that's like an ain't uh, uh, an ancient symbolization as well too and you will see it through all out Christianity you will sometimes see the finger going up to like heavenly up and then you'll see two fingers being held out and this is another symbolization that has a a, um, a, a meaning behind it a significance behind it now but what's more what's more identifiable here is look at this guy has this this axe which means genetic splicing axe going through his hand now look where his hand is at underneath his his wardrobe and up at his penis why would that be there I'm telling you that this all represents genetic splicing so why would this man's hand be at his penis look underneath his wardrobe and at his penis why do you think the artists make that suggestion you know what this is, is said this, why this is being said it's telling you that this man genetically was bridged or br a bridge and it's telling you he has two fingers up meaning that two nuts two injections of his semen and he is showing you that there was two there was two genetic bridgings that he calls that calls for a genetic change now I can read this whole thing and I know that it doesn't even make I mean that but look at here when you Google the image look at the the man's face there attached to the dragons and the dragons has his two feet um two to two to I mean one of them I one of two and this and this image of man's mouth right there showing you the genetic bridging and, and the splicing these genetics people were in us and they're showing you how they were removed that's what this is all about and it, and it shows you a de a, a, the process in which these genetics were removed and these axes and these tools are all a representation of genetic splicing just like on the Peruvian stones now I want to show you something about how this these images are just like with the Peruvian stones now check this out here is this man clutching at his penis 
Now you know he's not scratching. Why would the artist go through the extreme of letting this man's hand disappear up underneath where his penis is, underneath his clothing? If I was not right, this is this is referencing genetics. Now, on the peruvial burial stones, here are these two guys. with their penis out at facing each other now I'm gonna make another connection on the Peruvian burial stones you see the head cut off the dragon here in, the, uh, in this painting Peruvian burial stones shows the head being removed from the dragon but yet shows other mutations that are around showing you that this is a genetic splicing this guy was spliced and if you look at the dragon I mean this um this dinosaur his dragons and the other look at how the 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 um the characters on these stones look like the creature showing you their genetic connection they look identical to the creature that they're supposed to be slain the same factor or the same thing that is actually happening here this man's face is similar to the face of the creature that he is slain and then it shows you change and you know I mean it changes as it bridges along there now I want to show you something else about this what, what was my other connection here there was something else that I wanted to show you and uh, <laughs> what was it I might go to the Peru uh, let me make sure I'm not missing nothing here I showed oh here I know what I want to show you remember I said that there's a genetic connection and um, here look right here on this guy when you google the image and you will see a strand of his body his flesh being snaked away from his body right there and it comes here in a string and it's shown bridged over into this guy and then what is being symbolized here is you so see the different hair colors all right. It shows you that there was a, a genetic bridging between different bloodlines. Okay, you'll see this man here. He has he was bridged. He has the presence of this creature in him, and it shows you that his genetics were taken out, and it was bridged along these under in, uh, other individuals, and it shows you that they were genetically different, and it uses. The, um, the, um, the discolorations of the hair to let you know different cultures of of, um, of these cave like individuals or whatever they are Neanderthal, I don't know what they are and the, uh, 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 I don't know what kind of people they are to be totally honest with you you know what I mean but it just shows you that genetically they were how they were broken down and bridged and how the, the genetics of this creature was removed which represents all of this stuff represents a reptilian bloodline people and that's what these paintings are telling us you know what I mean it's the it's the it's the passage of these genetics from our ancestors which were dragons and dinosaurs and we were genetically bridged with all of these creatures and it shows you how these genetics were bridged and it shows us the direction that these genetics went and ultimately led to what we have become today and from these eras, this is what this is all showing. Now, I'm going to take you to the Peruvio burial stones. All right. <clears throat> Last night when I was looking at this image, because I was going to make a video for this, and it did take me back to the Peruvio burial stones, because everything that's being indicated here is also being suggested on the Peruvio burial stones. Now, you can't see it, but also in the anatomy of the body, if you look closely at the anatomy of the body, there are beings that are being depicted here and there's a presence okay and in the anatomy 
just like Rembrandt, just like Picasso, just like Michelangelo, just like Da Vinci, they use the anatomy of these beings, of the people that are being depicted. Anytime you see or there's a suggestion made of genetic bridging, they show you the direction on the trail of the way these genetics went and how they were broken down and how they were changed. And that's why these paintings become famous. So look in the anatomy as well too, people. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you everything about the painting. I always leave something out because you know what I mean, therefore it always remains um 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 left for me to explain um the rest of it there. Now at the Peruvian burial stones, I thought I seen well, everybody knows that they're they're indicating there's a heart there, and it shows how they're taking and removing a heart. Now, when I looked at that heart, now through, you know I t I'm telling you that I had a paranormal experience and an encounter that actually allows me to go go through and feel and feel what what is here. I looked at the heart, and I said to myself, then on, I said that don't look like a normal heart. I said that looks like a dinosaur's heart or a reptilian's heart. And the way they actually have it drawn out and the way it looks, I mean, the heart looks weird, to be totally honest with you, but you can tell that it is a heart. And I said to myself that these people are showing us their, how they intermingled with these creatures and these lizards. And it, looks, and it shows you a genetic evolution between man genetics and dinosaur genetics. This is not about them killing these dinosaurs. Physically, this is about a genetic bond that they came through genetically through these creatures. And this is what is being depicted here. This is not about them slaying on these rocks. I mean, look at this, people. It is showing you how you have a dinosaur's mouth on the foot of a man. And it shows you how there's mutations, a cycle of mutations that are created. It shows you what happens here. And then it shows you the changes. Of how these mutations came about. This is not about no killing of a dinosaur or killing of mankind. It's showing you how there was a, a, a genetic connection and then mutations were formed. And in the Peru in the Peruvian burial stones, they show you, let me show you another um splicing where where these creatures where they're looking just like uh uh, I can't. I don't have it here. <clears throat> Where they're showing you. Look at this. You have three men on the back of a dinosaur. Now everybody knows that the the the, the flower represents the tree of life and, and and life. Now people, if the dinosaur has the leaf in in its mouth. The axe at its mouth showing you that there's a genetic splicing. And then look, everybody here has a leaf in, in, in its mouth. People, don't that tell you? And look, and they're on the, 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 the dinosaur. And I'm telling you that it represents genetic bridging. People, isn't this telling us that there was a genetic bridging here? That there's, that there's a connection? All three of these, um, oh, well actually four. Of these creatures. Doesn't that show us people. And I'm telling you that this represents. Genetic bridging. This means genetic splicing. A splice. Either the knife or the axe. They were spliced. Look at this. The one end of the axe at the, um, the, the dinosaur's mouth. And then the next part of the axe at this guy's mouth. And he's telling us. Hey look. We were spliced. With this creature. Me and this creature is one. These stones people are telling us that we are genetically linked with these creatures. And all of the mutations that came from it are actually depicted on the stones. And it's showing us our genetic link and connection to this. And this is a grail telling us. A grid which actually uh, telling us the direction of these bloodlines from which we actually evolved. And this is global in everything. This is what these messages are, these hidden messages are. That we look at this. I'm gonna show you this guy's face. Oh, here's one here. Let me show you this guy's face. People, here's one of these guys' faces here. Let me let me look at their faces on the Google Peruvian burial stones. 
Look at their faces. They're showing you that they're looking just like the creature that they're slaying. Now, these, now, granted, people, now look, these are some damn good artists, by the way, because they made good depictions of horses and everything else. You know what I mean? So, these burial stones have some, some excellent artwork on them. So, why would they make their self look like a lizard creature if they were not? You see what I'm saying? If they can make a heart, hold on. If they can make a depiction of a heart, hold on. Where is that? Hold on. If they can make a depiction, let me bring that in some. Let me zoom that in. Which look like a lizard heart, by the way. If they can make a depiction of a heart, that close in likeness to a heart, and, and I mean so perfect, and other depictions, why would they make their self look like a lizard? If they were not genetically that, or look like that, you see what I'm saying? So, I mean, something, something is definitely wrong here. Let me take another sip of my coffee here before I go into what I'm going to tell you next. All right, so I'm going to tell you something about because this opened up my um, my thought wave and pattern to the to the um, to the peripheral burial stone. So, I went to sleep last night with questions on my mind, and I woke up with the answers as I normally do. So I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to share something good with you about those Peruvian burial stones. All right. The Peruvian burial stones. First of all, I'm going to tell you that carvings on rocks. These carvings, they can't, they don't know how these carvings was made. Just like they don't know how everything else was made that was ancient. Everybody said that they don't know how they were made. But I read glyphs. I seen glyphs. And actually, besides being paranormally collect, connected to all of this, I can, um, let me see if I can get that down. I can, um, I can experience this because when I see stuff like this ancient, I become connected to it somehow, either spiritually or paranormally, whatever you want to actually say, I um I become connected. I mean, it's like I was there when this was being created. Right. I see what's going on. First of all, when I see this rock, I don't see this rock in the sense that it's a rock before me. I see the rock in the sense of how this, this rock was created and how this art and all of this was created. There's a connection with me with this. A paranormal connection okay and and in doing it I mean in this connection I can I can come up with a logical explanation as to how this all came right here now nobody has ever explained how these drawings because <clears throat> these are these, I mean these are some some precise lines that are drawn and some that some people speculate that this was all done by laser this that and the third um, that how these were created but it's just not the case. Most of our ancient ancestors actually lived around or inhabited around volcanic activity, equators and that, um, and that, and and lava flows, which which lava flows come from. Now, I've also seen glyphs. Now, I experience them. Utilizing lava flow, rock from volcanic mass, and creating clay-like rocks from this matter. Use, utilizing material substances from lava to make their own rock, and this is how this is also explains how these me megalithic um, stone pyramids and, and, and building structures have been created, and now. And me experiencing that, all I have to do then is just go out and find the evidence of it. And I have found the evidence because where in some glyphs it shows where volcanoes, um, vo um, um, volcano, I mean, vo how do you say that? Volcanoes, volcanoes are erupting. It shows people bringing and it shows that the, the lava flow off the volcano, off the a volcano, and it shows them rolling down this 
this rock, this hot lava rock from the volcano. Now, we know that that's not happening. However, it's letting you know that they have controlled over removing volcanic matter um, from lava and making these rocks out of it. Okay? Now, we all know that, I mean, the, the degree and the temperature of this, so it's not going to happen. But they're letting you know in these glyphs that they had the capability of utilizing the, 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 the volcanic matter from volcan um, volcanoes to actually take and, um, and, and, um, and later make things and objects out of it. And that's what the signification of all of this was. So, in this cooling state, they could actually make objects like these. And this is how I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that um, Angkor Wat was built. This is how <coughs> the, <coughs> excuse me, the Great Pyramids in Giza was built. And all of other megalithic structures globally were built. They used it. They got this, this rock mass, not from its solidified state already, but from its cooling state from volcanic matter. Now, having said that, which means then that the carving dating on all of our ancient meg megalithic structures, the carving dating on these on these Peruvian burial stones, all of this stuff cannot be carbon dated for the simple fact that the material substances that are in this, based on everything that I just said here, would actually be incorrect because the 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 fact that Volcanic matter is actually created um, through lava from the earth and through the process of, subdu um, of subduction. Meaning that stone is being moved from one place to the next. And, mass and, and matter mass is being taken from somewhere else, mixed in with other materials, and then brought through to a place. Now imagine these people making stone objects from that mass that has been moved from other lo locations and this explains why you hear people talking about these quarries being many miles away and these large objects being moved here they did not have to move it themselves it was actually moved for them in liquid form and all they had to do was capture it in a basin or and just take and take it from it and take and pull from it like almost like cooling cement or whatever and all they would have to do would just have a process to where they cooled it pulled it out used it as almost like clay and create these objects that whatever they wanted to do and this is how this was actually set up it reminds me of, 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 of a concrete mixer truck on how it delivered and basically all you had to do was at the, the shoot of the concrete mixer uh, pour the concrete in where you want to do it at. So imagine the Great Pyramids of Giza being built like that. The stones that are in place. This is why they're so precise. This is why they're... I mean, all you have to do if it's in this place is just rub them smooth. That's it. You're talking about almost like a concrete mass. A putty. That a hardened rock hard after you already put it in place, in, in almost like in this liquid state, and handles almost like um like um like Play-Doh or clay. And this is the, how these people made these stones as well too. Now, and then draw on them because then all you would need is a needle prick, and you can just make your lines and 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 draw all this any way you want, and just wait for it to I mean to dry, and then just wipe it smooth. That's it. This is what this is all about. Now, if I have your attention, if I don't have your attention, I want to tell you more about these Perubial burial stones while I have you here. Now, these Perubial burial stones, why would these people go through so much extremes to put these Look at this. Look how they depicted the Triceratops and the dinosaurs. And look what they gave them their precise faces and everything, people. Look at this. That's why I'm telling you, for them to make their face to look like the dinosaur, it tells you that there was a genetic bond, and they said, look, we have the blood of these, the genetics of these creatures in our blood, and look, we are, and these creatures are one. 
That's what they're telling you. We and these creatures are one. Look. Look at this man's head. I am a dinosaur, people. Look. That's what he's telling us on these rocks. Showing you genetics, snaking off, and everything else. I am a dinosaur. Now, the rocks. Oh, this is a woman getting her. Showing you again genetic splicing. Look at this here, this pregnant woman. She's nursing on one on one titty. And he's showing you splicing. Look, here's another example of genetic splicing. Look at him showing with a knife in his hand, piercing her nipple, and it's showing you, look, her, she's spitting fluid. I saying, look, she's genetically giving her genetics to him. And look, and he's showing you, he's spitting, showing genetics going. There, and then look, and then he's touching the baby. It's showing you a cycling nation of genetic, genetic bridging. Again, on this rock. A pregnant woman, one tit in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the child's, towards the child drinking. This guy over here with a knife at her tit. This one. Showing you splicing and then showing you spitting fluid from there. Showing you that, look, his genetics is going into her. And look, and she's showing you that she's giving them to him. And then his hand is reaching over here to the child. And it's showing you that they're genetically bridging. Genetics. Another form of showing you of genetic manipulation and bridging right there. Now, why would these people go through so much trouble... Oh, here's another one. Let me get let me give you this one here. Again, these snake-like objects showing you the paths of genetics. Look at this. Walking up the the um, um the back of the dinosaur there, showing you steps. Bridged over. Look. Genetics bridged over this dinosaur and showing you that man and dinosaur bridged over each other genetically. Same exact thing here. And then mutations over in the in the background. Now, why would they put these, why would they go through so much trouble, people? This is what we're back at here, right? Why would they go through so much trouble to put these drawings on these small rocks? And here is the blockbuster in all of this. You know why? Because of everything that I have just told you about these Peruvian people having the understanding that they were genetically linked with this creature. They were genetically linked with the dinosaur. So you know what they're, they're telling you? Their behavior, their mindset, everything about these people was thinking in the way of that of their ancestor. So guess what they did? They put all of their drawings on these small rocks indicating and signifying the egg of the dinosaur first time you ever heard that first time you ever heard of how the stones were created first time you ever heard of how the stones were drawn on anything these are symbolizations of dinosaur eggs. <clears throat> That's what the Peruvian stones are. These reptilian-like beings, these reptilian-like creatures, which calls for <clears throat> mankind's existence and creation, it shows us they are saying that the dinosaur egg, the dinosaur, it's the cause for everything that came afterwards. The monkeys. It's showing you. 
and it is saying the egg. What other better way to symbolize all of this, people, except through what they have symbolized here? They're telling you through the egg of the dinosaur, all of the later likenesses that are that are that are uh, drawn on them is what came. This is a um, I have this this is a um, one of those stones as well too. And this is that symbolization, people. That's what they're telling us. You see that? That's what this is telling us. That these eggs came the other life forms. And they are commemorating it all by putting it on stones that are in the shape of that of their dinosaur ancestor. Their dinosaur creator. And it's no different than what is being done today with Jesus on the cross. It's and being symbolized for, um, for 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 dying on the cross for the sins of man. These beings back then are saying we were genetically created through the dinosaur, and they are commemorating it by drawing and telling you, leaving the message behind that we evolved from the dinosaur and if anybody ever found these rocks and probably never thought that I mean it would be like this here that they would misinterpret it however then this is the symbolization of where we actually came from and this is how we were created this is our genetic becoming this is where we evolved from and this is this is our story and this is what this is all about people this is what this is all about. Now, Peruvian burial stones, I mean, they were not uh, just found, but not so long ago. But I think they said they've been around since the, the day it was first discovered, probably back in the 14th century or whatever. But people, artists, Renaissance artists, has the same exact story that's on these Peruvian burial stones. That same story right here. When there's the touching of the penis, the fingers being held up to, and the genetic splicing. That same story, people, is on these Peruvian burial stones. And the faces and likenesses of these of these Peruvian um, 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 people, if they're Peruvians, whatever they are, have the face and likenesses of the dinosaur. The same exact thing is being shown here, where this guy, this guy looking all demonic-like, but looking just like the creature that they're slaying. The same way the Peruvians made their, their thing. And then the dinosaur, I mean the, the dragon over here, has the image of man, the likeness of man genetically right there. And then showing you this here. This symbolization. All of this stuff, people, shows how these creatures caused for our existence and how it all came. And they're showing you how mankind's likeness came from all of this. And this is what this is all about. And science have distorted everything in such a way based on those that select few that already know how we came into existence. That select few that came into existence. I mean, I'm not came into existence. That know how we came into existence. Distorted the truth and now control our science, our knowledge, and everything else. Why they enjoy the truth behind how we were created have us chasing wild gooses when the truth is right there our ancestors left it there for us here's another thing here I like this one here this is a Peruvian burial stone and it shows when you see this when you see this picture you know what you see you see a dinosaur they will let you believe that that is a dinosaur Gripping a man up and, 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 and eating them back in the day, right? And this is on another one of those um, those egg-shaped rocks. You know what I see? I see a creature that, that they're signifying how lions, how dogs, how kittens, how they carry their young at the back of their neck. 
people, isn't this what this is depicting? This dinosaur is carrying this mankind-like figure in a way that animals carry their young after birth. It is telling you that this man, this 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 image of mankind, this is my baby. We're on an egg. This is my baby. And look, even has it look this the shirt almost like a baby. And look, if you want to believe, now we know they're not diapers back then. You know what I mean? Laugh, you can laugh on that one. But look at this. It's showing you that this man evolved through the egg of the dinosaur and it's telling you that this man is this dinosaur's baby or this woman is this dinosaur's baby. This yeah, this is the dinosaur's baby. That's what it's telling you. That's what this is all saying. How you see a kitten carry its, 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 its baby. How you see a lion carry its baby. How you see everything carrying its baby. This is what this is all saying. Mankind is the baby of the dinosaur. The creation of the dinosaur. And this is the story of the Peruvian burial stones. And artists that know the story, but yet try to keep it from you. Look at this. See that, people? My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. I'm also on... Um, I'm also on Alien UFOs and um, on Alien UFOs and Dreams and Experiences and my title there on my forum is um, I am an alien and so are you or you can just google my name Jerome Wright you can spell it G-E-R-O-N-E W-R-I-G-H-T people our true passage mankind's true evolutionary passage there's a record of it there's always been a record of it and there's a small select few that actually knew how we actually became to the likenesses and, and what we are today they always knew it but they kept it from us yep. so the deal with this is is that I'm bringing you through my paranormal experience and encounter the truth and people there's no way that I can take the one picture after the next and just keep showing you this and showing you this and showing you this. There's no way. Yeah. The deal with all of this is that it happened, it's reality, and now you can look at this image and say, why? Why would an artist make this? Doesn't it now make sense after hearing all of my explanations about the Peru? Look, even the Peruvian burial stones, you would say, they don't make no sense. But after hearing what I've just told you, don't all of this make much more better sense now? Don't this make sense to you? Don't this image make sense to you now? Don't these images make sense to you now? Where before they didn't? Did it? This didn't make sense to you, but now it does. You know why? Because I've discovered the truth. And now you can understand this. And you can understand why Rembrandt, why Picasso, why all of these ancient biblical um, 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 and Renaissance artworks are referencing things in the way that they are. Everything here now makes sense, people. My name is Jerome Wright. Thank you. I'm going to end this video here. Hi, everybody. Jerome right here again. And um, I have an image up of um, a Renaissance painting. And the title of this is Killing Dragons by Colart 
after stratumus and it's C1640 okay so you can actually um, Google this image as well too okay again it's killing dragons by Colart that's C-O-L-L-A-R-T after stratumus that's S-T-R-A-D-U and you um, S and um, 1640. Uh, the date is supposed to be on this. I don't know if this was made and created in 1640 or what there. But anyway, 1640. Okay, people, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you um, something about this. First of all, these images. We have a lot of images that um, it's not in our in our history and in our record. However. A select few do know about that. I'm drinking my coffee as well as I'm doing it. So please um, forgive me as I take a break. Hmm. Alright. I want to show you something with this. People, look at this unusual painting. You have a, um, a like a lizard dinosaur. Um, um, I'm dragging here. I'm um, fighting with the image of that of like an elephant back here. You have these individuals running from... A, um, a dragon from over here then here you have these individuals about to slay a sleeping dragon and over here you have these individuals which chopped off a head of a sleeping dragon people this exact image reminds me of what is actually being depicted in reference um, and the best reference of it all is um, um, not just um, Angkor Wat where you see a triceratops on the building and that and that glyph there on the on the building at Anchor Watch, which actually shows other mutations. I didn't and I didn't actually um do the um a video on that yet, but even with Anchor Watch with that Triceratops, it shows the other mutations above and below of how mankind was genetically um bridged um through that creature. Well, do mankind came through that key creature. That's what this is actually showing and signifying. And this is what's happening globally, people. When you see these creatures, dinosaurs, these these ancient um dinosaurs depicted with mankind or recorded with mankind, it's showing you people that that is where we genetically evolved from. Okay, but it's just and what was found on the uh, the Peruvian burial stones. It's almost identical. And I want to point some things out to you about this here with this artist. If you look at this for what it is, people, even in the, in that time, if you think about this, this painting makes absolutely no sense. Look at this. It makes absolutely no sense, does it? Now, you want it to make sense? Let me make, I'm going to make quick sense of it for you. Real very quick sense. Look at it in the sense that they're telling you that there was a genetic splicing. Look at these as these axes, not as weapons, uh, not as weapons to destroy the dragon, but look at them as weapons, and and in in, in in indicating say stating that not weapons, but um, they're stating that these of where our ancestors or artists actually depict our ancestors either slaying dragons or as you see it, uh, um, something an indication of dragons, but yet it's um. Is supposed to be um, dragons and, and dinosaurs or and all of these things are not even supposed to be mentioned in our history because we have um, we have um, not supposed to have coexistence with these creatures okay and <clears throat> and um, I don't know if, if 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 there was a coexistence or not because I actually wasn't there however through my paranormal experience and encounter I do know for a fact that we are genetically linked with these creatures and that's why um, it's being